part two of our lecture in biological psychology. In the last lecture, we took a look at the brain, uh, the, the central driver of who we are, the maker of our identity. But the brain is part of a system, a larger system that includes the entire human body. And so in this lecture, we're going to take a look at that system and see how the brain interacts with the rest of the body via that nervous system. The nervous system can be divided into two basic parts. The central nervous system, or CNS, is the brain and the spinal cord, since the very center. The rest of the nerves throughout the body are known as peripheral. Um, so think uh, in terms of driving your peripheral or side vision. Um, and that'll help you remember that peripheral is all the other nerves in the body. The peripheral nervous system itself can be divided into further parts. So we have the nerves that are part of the muscles, the somatic nervous system, SNS, Soma means body in Greek, if that helps you remember that. Um, and then there is the autonomic nervous system, which has two parts. Auto implies self, that is, it rules and regulates itself. And that is a good way to remember that the autonomic nervous system is not voluntarily controlled. These are the nervous system parts that run on their own, that don't need you to tell them what to do. Whereas the nerves and the muscles, the somatic system, those are consciously controlled. You can tell your arm to move. You can tell your toe to wiggle. So in the autonomic system, it's not voluntarily controlled. It has two parts, the sympathetic, system is the system that um, gets you energized and aroused during times of danger. Um, and then the parasympathetic is regular processes um, that are not the danger side of the equation. Um, for our purposes, we're going to talk a lot about the sympathetic nervous system in this class. Um, because of the nature of danger causing us to be excited and energized um, in order to you know, protect ourselves uh, when we're threatened. And so we'll talk a lot about that through the rest of this course, how that affects um, aspects of our perception, how that affects um, our memories, um, how that you know, affects the way that we act in the world when we are aroused during danger. And I know you might be sort of giggling a little bit about the word arousal. Note, psychologists use arousal to mean the heightening of a body's response. Um, so that is a very common word to get, to get used to in psychology. Nervous system as we just mentioned, we have two branches, sympathetic and parasympathetic. And I have a couple of phrases that will help you remember these. Sympathetic is fight, flight, or freeze. Parasympathetic is rest and digest. And so these sets of phrases can help you remember what these two branches of the nervous system do. In the body, there is a whole cascade of activities that take place in each branch. In the sympathetic nervous system, when you're threatened, you could choose to fight, you could choose to run, you could choose to hide. So what enables you to do these things? Well, dilating your pupil, um, your mouth gets dry, your heart rate accelerates, um, your um, body is preparing essentially to deal with danger. So 
for example, one of the things that happens is you don't digest because when you're threatened, you don't need food and you don't need to be digesting food. Your bladder contracts uh, so that you can not be threatened by the need to pee when you are um, in danger. The other branch of the autonomic nervous system, the parasympathetic, is the more relaxed uh, branch that controls a lot of processes that you don't have to think about. So you salivate, you're hungry, your heartbeat relaxes, your digestion is stimulated, your bladder is relaxed and stimulated so that uh, you feel like, oh yeah, I can go to the bathroom now. So these are sort of, uh, you can almost see them as kind of opposite sides of the same um, coin, just in different situations. When you're threatened, sympathetic kicks into high gear, parasympathetic when you're not in danger or you're not afraid or anxious or nervous. Many of the activities of the body that are not under our conscious control uh, come to be known as reflexes. We are born with these reflexes. There are a number of baby reflexes, in fact, that they test for when a child is born to see that that child is properly developed as an infant. The reflex system is handled entirely in the spine. Um, the reason for this is that the spine can do a faster response with the reflex without the need of the brain to process it and think about it. If we had to wait on the brain to make a decision, then we would be in danger because the reflex wouldn't kick in fast enough for us to save ourselves from touching a hot stove, for example. Some of these reflexes um, are ones that we can test um, even as adults. So when doctors um, do a hammer tap um, near your knee to check to see if you've got um, the reflex kick of the foot, many of these reflexes are ones that we don't think about um, on a day-to-day -day basis, they just seem to happen. So for example, a gag reflex, when you feel like something is about to uh, impede your ability to breathe or swallow, safety mechanism there. Blinking um, in order to protect your eye from um, incoming debris or dirt.